So tonight we're talking about our fall 2022 craft party menu that just came out on August 1st. And um, we're gonna, like I said, start by um, talking about like where you're gonna find your craft party menu, um, all of the tools that are included in the menu. And then we'll kind of talk about each of the crafts. That way, if you have questions about one or the other, we can um, cover them each as we go along. So the first thing I just wanted to make sure everybody was able to find your fall menu when you're logged into um, your craft teachers club, you'll go right here to the craft party menu and then it'll be the first one on top for fall. And once you click that, it will take you into the whole list, one on top of another um, of each of the five crafts. And for each of them, you have three different things. There is a craft party profile, which is your first little download bar. And then the video tutorial is right below that. And below that are going to be your marketing images. So for the fall menu, there are six images for each of the crafts. Um, we kind of upped it a couple because we felt like we just needed a little bit more. And so that is where to find everything. And then of course, as you scroll, you'll see each of the other crafts below. So I wanted to just touch on everything that's in the profile because there's so much in there. Um, and I just wanna make sure it all makes sense. Um, so the first thing you'll see in there will be your craft details followed by a sample event description. And then you'll have a list of all of the supplies that you'll need for each person and some links with some favorites. And then at the bottom, you'll have teacher tips and so we're going to talk about each one of these. So let's look at our craft details first. These are going to help you decide if you want to teach the craft. Um, it's going to give you things like how long the party is going to take. This is about an, an estimated party time. Usually we want to keep it to an hour. Um, an hour and a half is going to be the max that we think is fun for a craft party. Um, we've done some longer ones. And when you get close to two hours, um, your guests will be ready to take a break. <laughs> and so we'll, we'll try to keep it into an hour and a half. And we'll talk about some variations in some of these crafts where it can be a longer or shorter craft. Um, but usually 90 minutes is kind of the magic number. You want to be more close to an hour. Um, and then we have appropriate age levels. Some crafts you can teach six, seven, and eight-year-olds, and some you're going to want your um, students to be a little bit older, like with needle felting. Um, and then we, we kind of calculate the prep time and give you an approximation how, of how long it will take to prepare for the craft if you are preparing for 20 crafters. Um, that would be things like taking labels off of vases or potting your plants, um, cutting out things, and stuff like that. And then we have an estimated cost of supplies per crafter as well. And, you know, of course, this can vary depending where you get your supplies. Um, we were talking before this about vases going on sale and being able to get them for $2 instead of $4 and um, things like that, that you can lower your cost or get real excited about fancy things and your cost might go up a little. And then we have our um, suggested ticket price, which is also based on the prep time and the cost of supplies. And so that's kind of an estimation of about what you would wanna sell your tickets for. So on your profile right below that, you will have a sample event description. And this is um, just an easy way that you already have some information to start selling tickets and letting your guests know what to expect. Um, there's so much we could talk about with these descriptions, but um, a few things I just want to note is that you'll always want to talk about your customer instead of saying, I will provide all the supplies for you to make these bath bombs. You'll want to say, you know, you'll have a great time making them. Um, everything is included. You'll just want to really talk about your customer. And so even though we give you this lovely little description here, it's still missing some details. And these are going to be 
you specific details and things that are relevant to your individual party. So here in orange, I've kind of added in a few details that you might want to include in your description, such as um, the place that you're going to be teaching your party, whether it's online or at a brewery. Um, and then the ticket price is always good to include in your description um, because people want to know what the price is right up front. They don't want to have to search for it. It's just easier if they know right away. And you'll want to let them know whether or not any food or drinks are included with their ticket price. Um, if you're mailing them, you could include here the cost of shipping or shipping is included um, or any other details that um, your customers will need to know up front. So there's a few examples for you. And then we have our supply list. Um, there's not much to say about this. This is just everything that your students will each need to complete the craft. It includes individual supplies and shared supplies. So some crafts, your students can share scissors, but it will still be on the supply list, even though everybody won't necessarily need their own pair of scissors. And then we have some links for some favorite materials that are just tried and true or um, a great deal or something like that. And then teaching tips, of course, a lot of times things we've learned the hard way um, or just kind of found out from already having done it. So those are basically everything you'll have in your profile. And that once you've kind of gone through all that and decided if you wanna teach the craft, um, we will go on to the video tutorial. So I know most of you have seen a bunch of our tutorials. So it, the new ones, um, I don't know if anybody noticed with the fall menu, I've kind of changed them a little bit more, um, the layout to be a little bit more specific with starting out with the supplies to introduce each of the supplies. And then we go into how to prepare for your party and different things you might need to do to prep and then how to make it and how to teach it and then sprinkled in our tips for different things. So that's everything in your video. And then we have your marketing images. Like I mentioned, there's six and that is just an easy way to start promoting your party. You can upload them to Canva and type the date of your party or make your own or something cute and use them on your social media right away. So does anybody have questions about the menu or the tools? or the profile or anything before we talk about the individual craft? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? <laughs> okay. Awesome. All righty, I'm super excited. So the first one we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Gothic pendant necklace. I can't decide which of these crafts I love the most, but this one, I just wanted to quit my day job and make pendants all day and, you know, start an Etsy store. And then I was like, that's a horrible idea. Why would I do that? I'm trying to talk people out of that. So um, I have probably made about 20 of these already and I'm getting ready to wear all of them. Um, so this is a great craft for a first time teacher. It's a really easy craft to teach. It doesn't require as much instruction as something like bath bombs where um, it's a little more free free form and it's a, a very low cost craft. It's like three to $4 a person, um, very little prep time. The only thing you may want to prep would be like putting some of the um, little jewels and gems into the containers to make it easier for your guests to have them close at hand. But really um, this one is just pretty much ready to go. And the materials are extremely light weight and durable so they can be mailed out you can do in-person or online parties one of the reasons that we chose the epoxy that we chose is that it's uv it can be set in the sun um so i haven't tested it entirely but it said 30 minutes in direct sunlight 20 minutes when you're closer you know we're we're really close to the sun so i'm actually kind of curious that's next on my to-do list um but we thought that would be great because you wouldn't have to mail everybody their own UV light. But if somebody did have one, of course they could use it. 
We thought this would be awesome too if you were doing a private party for a group of people and sent out a kit to them. It could include the light. Um, there's there's some UV lights that are like 15, they're like 15 to $30, I would say, average. And I love that your students have so much creative freedom when making this craft um, versus something like bath bombs where everyone's pretty much the same. So I know Kathy's gonna be teaching this. Is anybody else thinking about teaching the pendants? I am considering it, but I, I have a question about doing it online. Like how would I mail the epoxy? So we've done this before with like little, and maybe we can find some on um, Amazon, but they're like little tiny bottles that you can fill. So the epoxy comes in a pretty good size um, bottle, but uh -huh. you could get little, um, what were the size we had? I think we had half, think they're half ounce, a half ounce dropper. And that way it's a very little amount. It'll be more than they need, um, but they will definitely have enough in about a half ounce dropper. Okay. And, and I know you, you said you haven't tested the direct sunlight like can it be in a window in direct sunlight or Ooh. does it have to be outside because I usually do mine in the evening mm -hmm. and so then there's the sunlight is not there <laughs> yeah I remember so it said direct sun 15 minutes indirect sun 30 minutes to an hour if it's cloudy or indirect sunlight so I feel like in a window it wouldn't it wouldn't keep out the UV light. It shouldn't. Okay. Most windows aren't tinted for that. So I would think in a window would be great. I'm going to do this and I'm going to let you know. Okay. Well, and, and I'll try it too before I would decide to teach it. I'm just trying to figure out if it's worth. Yeah. But that if you don't want to have to order in the epoxy, I can, I already have some, so we can totally uh -huh. play. With it. I've been it's intending been to, it's been. It's right, like just to time. say, okay, we're going to do this tonight, and now you need to put it in the window without moving it until tomorrow when yeah. it gets cured. I just don't know. I don't know enough about epoxy to know how that works. Right, and night parties, you I'm trying to think what I would do if it was already after sunset would show. I would show everybody how to do the final layer because once everything's in there. Uh huh. Um, when you add that final like bubble on top, uh -huh. they could do that. You could show it to them and then have them do it the next day when it's sunny. When it's sunny, okay. If you wanted to, so that way it wasn't liquidy all night while they're waiting for. Right, it to be that's sunny. what I'm worried. You know, and then the cat jumps up or a kid knocks <laughs> yep. it or something. I'm like, put it up here on this shelf. That's very true. Okay. Yeah. I really, really like it. I'm just not sure about because I've not done epoxy before. I'm not sure about mailing the supplies and stuff. Yeah, usually anytime we mail anything liquid, we'll have it in its little bottle and then we'll put it into like a Ziploc. Right. Just double sealed. Um, and I know we've done glue before in little baggies just as its own little container, but I think the epoxy would be better in a dropper. Okay. Ooh, does anybody else have questions? Uh, not a question, but a comment. Um, when you're opening up, if you get the that same kit of little nail art pieces, um, open them up over a, a tub or a tray. Uh, three of my little pots were open and all the itty bitty tiny beads um, were in the bottom of the box and the bottom of the shipping bag. Uh, they oh, got wow. everywhere. <laughs> did, maybe what did they crack? Nope, they just weren't screwed on all the way and they had come open just enough to spill everything. Oh, of course. So, but so just just as that helpful hint so they don't have to other people don't have to vacuum them out of their rug. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I had like a piece of felt to keep them from rolling away, but then they were like in the felt and they were like, I need a, a like silver tray, like a mm -hmm. cookie sheet. Would um would packaging them in a like take the little bottle 
and then like closing the lid, but then putting that in a little Ziploc bag inside be a good idea? Mm hmm So that if it's yeah. spilt, it just spilt in the Ziploc bag. Yeah, that way that keeps it contained if any of the liquid spills, definitely. Oh, was she talking about liquid or was she talking about me? Oh, I was, was talking, talking about the, the little nail pieces. This is when I got them shipped from Amazon to me. They they oh, were oh, oh, oh. They had come open. Oh, that's maddening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody wasn't doing their job. <laughs> All righty, so I'm going to jump over to the happy tree magnets. And um, one thing I love about these, I made them a little bit bigger, but the cool thing about the template is you can always print it um, smaller if you want to do like mini trees. Um, I just love them so much. So I was super excited about these guys. They do take a little bit longer um the party time especially if you're making both of them during the party um the cool thing about this is you can provide the materials for your guests to make two or three or four and um walk them through making one of them at your party and that way they have everything they need um to make their other one or two or three and it's a very low cost um craft Felt is super inexpensive and gives you flexibility to do your own kind of like colors. So I, I was excited, one tree, two tree, green tree, blue trees. And then tree didn't look like a word after I wrote it so many times. Oh, that is got... too cute. Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I love Dr. Seuss. But yeah. I, I just think it's so much fun that you can really do a lot with the trees and with the felt. Um, some of them, we added like little cute embroidery things like a heart or a flower, or you can keep them very simple. Um, I didn't want to add in a bunch of different embroidery stitches for this because that adds to your party time. So if you wanted to teach a French knot or something, um, just expect that that's gonna add about 20 more minutes to your party for any additional stitches because it, it um, takes a while to get everyone on the same page if they're not already familiar with embroidery. And then this craft um, is lightweight, so you can do it online. I think it's great online because it gives everybody a great visual of the small details. And did I skip over something? I felt like I did, but I didn't. Does anybody have questions about the happy trees? Is anybody going to be teaching these? I ordered felt. <laughs> I did order mine through Etsy because I found a place where I could choose the colors I wanted. Um, but I wanted to ask about the magnets. If if the ones that you um, linked, if those have, have stayed on well for you. The ones, the stick on ones stayed on pretty well. If I was... Like I, I was able to pull some of them off because I was kind of testing their durability, but for use of putting them on and off the fridge, I didn't have any of them come off. Um, I, I like super glue sometimes <laughs> just because it's so permanent. Um, but I didn't have too many issues with the stick on ones. They're not as strong of a magnet to where it will stay on the fridge and pull apart. It took a little bit of force to get them off of there. Um, but I like them. I'm definitely planning to teach this one. I'm excited about it. Mm. Yay. I'm excited. I want to see pictures. <laughs> what color palette did you get? Or I have not ordered. I ordered have a ton of felt ordered. here. So My, I haven't um, chosen yet. Yeah, just all sorts of greens, some that went a little bit gray, a couple that went a little bit blue. 
think one was like called spearmint or something like that. But then I came back and looked at your pictures and saw all the pretty like other colors you had. And now I want to go back and buy more. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, because I went to the craft store, you know, and of course they started with all the greens and I was like, oh, but I could throw in some cream and a pop of red. And so 30 pieces of felt later. <laughs> I was going to say resist, Kathy, resist. Something <laughs> I really learned is that our customers like if you change the colors up a little from the pictures, they don't mind. They don't ever comment on it. I don't know if you guys have found the same thing to be true. If you say you're going to give them this cement statue and they end up giving them this plastic statue in their terrarium, they will notice that. But color, mm. slight differences, they don't seem to mind. Yeah, I, I get nervous about that only because I took a class um, to make this really pretty bracelet and the bracelet we made in class looked nothing not because of our skill level but because she did not follow the pattern for the one that was in the pictures that were advertised and I was very disappointed in it <laughs> so I tried to be fairly true to the pictures or make my own picture yeah we did we did like Lisa kind of mentioned, have that one time where the picture had a cement statue and then we didn't have them in person. We had other statues and they definitely noticed. But yeah, most of the time um, they're pretty flexible. And I think a lot of times too, when, and it doesn't really necessarily pertain to these, but sometimes when there's too many color options, um, they get a little overwhelmed or they're they're scared to try one color because they're not sure they, they want to use the other one. And then if their friend uses blue and they use red, they're like, I should have used blue. So it's almost sometimes better to give them less options. That way they don't question themselves. They just go with the flow. Mm. Awesome. All righty. And we have poison apple bath bombs. These will require a little bit more guidance as a teacher um, because it's chemistry. They do need to follow along pretty specifically. It's a little bit higher cost than most of the two that we just talked about, which are like three to $4 a person. The bath bombs are gonna be closer to $8. Um, they have very little prep time and they are best for in-person parties because of the weight of the materials. Um, the uh, between all the dry ingredients, it can be pretty close to a pound with this recipe. So I would just do it probably mostly in person. We've done it online. You can do it online. It's not a no-go, but easier in person. And um, one thing I love about this is that even the class itself is very relaxing as everybody's mixing up their materials. They're having a great time just feeling like they're playing with beach sand and the smell is great. And so um, we have a lot of fun teaching bath bombs. Is anybody planning to teach apple bath bombs? Possibly. I'm thinking about it. If I can find the... Uh... Uh, how do you call that? The, the mold? Mm hmm A little apple mold. There's a link in your profile to the ones on Amazon that are this size. And um what was I did say? that link get changed? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> it was so weird because I only I had ordered regular size molds, circle ones, and then I'd ordered the apple ones so I could play with different things while we were making this menu. And for whatever reason, when I went back into my purchased item, it gave us a whole other mold. And I was like, what are you talking about? I only bought one. It's the link I gave you. We went to it and I'm like, this is weird. So it's, it's better now. And actually we, we found them for an even better deal than the ones I had originally ordered. Okay. Um, and after looking at so many of these, I was I was kind of excited. I'm like, where were these ones a month ago, two months ago? Perfect. So are they making uh, three or just one? We usually always have them make three. So this recipe okay. is made to fill three of this um, size bath bomb. Oh. 
And then um, there is also a video tutorial right below the bath bomb making tutorial in your membership for how to make the little poison bottle embed. Um, they aren't required to make bath bombs. They're just a fun addition. If you did want to make them, they're basically like a mini bath bomb sort of that's a little bit more, um, it's a higher ratio of citric acid to your um, baking soda. So it bubbles a lot more than the bath bombs themselves. And so they're kind of fun. We usually make them a different color. So these ones in the video, I made gold. So it adds gold shimmer to the bath water, but you could do blue and turn the bath purple um, or all kinds of fun stuff. So there is a tutorial in there for you guys about those. And I think that was everything about bath bombs. And then we will talk about our bat in flight tote. Um, I've been dying to do needle felting on canvas. So I was pretty excited about these guys. Um, this one has a little bit longer class time, like one hour to 90 minutes and is slightly higher cost around $8 as well, but doesn't have very much prep time and everything's pretty lightweight and durable. So you can do in-person or online. And then um, just like I kind of talk about in the video, you can offer a no sew option. That way you don't need the needle and the thread and the threaders. And um, you can just stick on the gems. So does anyone have questions about the tote? Is anyone planning to teach it? Undecided. I partially watched the video on that one, but it was like more of like playing with the like felt or something like that. Or what is was I kind of partially quickly watched it. Yeah, at the beginning it's talking about like mixing the different felts. Um we try not to order too many colors. They're only about six dollars, five, four, four dollars a, a ball. Um, and a little bit goes a really long way, $3. And um, so I kind of just wanted to show that with like, four, four or five colors, you can mix them and make a whole like color palette with just a few colors. They kind of mix like watercolors. I have to laugh when you say you don't... Uh try to buy too many as I sit here in my living room looking at three three doors uh three drawer storage carts full of wool <laughs> Kathy I'm telling myself and Michelle and Lisa too because we are we have to take our own advice sometimes when we get excited because we'll be like oh oh I want to get this and this and this and this and then we're like what one of us will be like oh hold on hold on hold on <laughs> let's take our own advice it is we have a lot of especially wool yes so much so much wool and let's see have you played with felting on canvas i haven't done i haven't done it on canvas before i do a lot of needle felting but mm -hmm. i know i love your needle felting I'll have to show you my little, my big mushrooms with the fairies on top sometime. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our layered terrariums. Um, these are also a great craft for a first time teacher because they're really simple to teach. And um, they're a little higher cost, like $10 a person. Um, we were talking about this before everybody jumped on where we can get <laughs> vases for half price if you're paying attention to sales for two dollars instead of four dollars um same with the plants there's different ways you can save money with live plants we usually use succulents um, because they're usually easier to care for since they are a cactus um and so they don't need as much water so most, most of the time they stay alive very well for our students um, but you can always do, if there's a sale on some other type of cute little plant, you could definitely change up the plant. And then um, these are best for in-person parties because the materials are heavy. There's rocks, there's sand, there's more rocks. 
there's plants. Um, you can mail them, but uh, it's just better to have everything in person. And um, this one is really like fun for all ages. We've had a lot of really young kids attend some of our terrarium, terrarium parties. And because this one in our classic terrarium party, um, we've had younger kids where then you have the roots and you have the soil and there's planting involved. With this, it's all it's in its pot and everybody will just insert the pot into the vase on top of the like fourth layer and then surround it with everything else. So that way there's no roots being exposed. The plants are more likely to survive this way and stay happy in their little pot. So what else? Is anyone teaching terrariums? I would like to teach them. If I get the nerve up to do a live class, I'm I'm thinking about doing the terrariums, but I'm not, I still haven't gotten the nerve up for live yet. Oh, do it. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, we've got health issues. That's my worry. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Veronica, did you say you were thinking about you'd like to teach these? Um, yes. I just need to um, get back on ball because most of my parties have been like canvas and like wine glass paintings. And so this will be like something new, bring it into what I've already established as craft parties. So it's like, I'm tear tarting, like, uh. It's really fun if you, um can get a couple vases, like three or four at a craft store and some some supplies and teach like a friend or a couple friends or coworkers. Um, it's a good way to test out how you feel about it. Because I always seem like the fairy ones and I'm like, oh, I want to try that. And then I never get to do it. So I'm like, um, now you have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many crafts. Awesome. And let's see. And then we just have all general questions. If anyone has other questions. A question about mailing out the UV resin. Should it be wrapped in like a piece of dark paper? I mean, when they get that, if it's in the bottle and it's in the sunny room, is that going to affect it inside the bottle? I wouldn't think so in when it's all packaged up um, because in a box or in an envelope, it won't have, that would be blocking the UV light from it. So I, I wouldn't expect it to be an issue. But I mean, when they get it and they're working with it. If they're working on it outside of they like they get their box and they're excited so they open it up and then like oh but I don't have time right now and they leave it out on their desk I'm just wondering if the sun will affect it that would be an interesting test also something that you could do to kind of handle that if you didn't want to do the cloth which I think makes sense just to be overly cautious but you could also just put in there you know the little note we recommend when you do online of like this is what you should have in your kit could probably have like something at the top that's like hey don't store this in light like sunlight until you're ready to use it that could also kind of help mitigate that problem gotcha or leave this in the envelope until you're ready to use it so you could put a little bottle into a little envelope in the package pretty clearly labeled mm or put a sticker directly on the little package that it's in that's like, keep packaged until you're ready. <laughs> keep out of the sunlight. It's like a vampire. <laughs> that's when I did the pressed flower class, I specifically put on the note that the flowers are super fragile. So, you know, treat them gently and tell the class. And then I um, I put them between two little pieces of cardboard and put a sticker on the cardboard mm -hmm. so that I feel like that would be a good idea for the UV, like just put it 
-hmm. in something, an envelope or whatever, and say, don't open until the party. <laughs> right. Yeah. Perfect. Kind of like don't open until Xmas. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and if you, even if you guys have questions tonight that aren't related specifically to this craft menu and just are just more general questions or other crafts, please feel free to ask them as we are here. <laughs> All three of us tonight, actually. <laughs> it's fun to have you all here. I know, it's so crazy when we're all in the same place at the same time. I do have some other questions, like like I'm, I'm transforming into with the more hands-on crafts because everything that I have is dealing with painting. So, trying to like market that um I don't know why I'm like nervous to like venture out in this direction to like go to the breweries and stuff like that I'm like I've done this like with wine glass paintings so why does this seem so much difficult to go forth with I think doing something different is always a little bit scary out, out of like my comfort zone. Um, but we sometimes will recommend even like taking somebody with you as like a moral support kind of person to come along. And when we first started, um, I was nervous to go talk to the breweries. Michelle was nervous. So we would go together. <laughs> one of us would like pep talk the other one and then one of us would wait in the car <laughs> we would just take turns going to talk to people and after a few places we were like okay okay this is good I got this. but this I know Sorry. even recently going to do more in-person events it was still a little bit scary this last time as we were approaching breweries I um I actually just sent a bunch of emails out figuring I'd cast a wide net and whoever responded did and whoever didn't missed out um and I was really surprised at how like I sent five emails out and I got two responses I think it was only two um so I like sent one and got one response <laughs> So normally what is like your turnaround um, when you're sending out emails? I am, um, we didn't used to send out emails and it was only because I was particularly fragile and I wanted to get us moving um, to go back in person. <laughs> so I, it, it actually took a few days for people to even respond. Um, so and so the first email they responded like three days later and they were like oh yeah let's chat about it and then the bar manager I was like why don't I come this day and he didn't quite get back to me so I showed up and he wasn't there and then he wound up calling and all it took was like five minutes for him to be like dude this is awesome we are in what do you want us to do um so it was and then the second one, um, I think August is such a weird time. People just don't, they're, they're gone, it's hot, everything sucks, it's summer. Um, and so I think like the second one, nobody responded for like a week and a half. And then they were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that'd be cool. So it was weird. <laughs> well, I had sent one. I had like, sent... Oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, no, I was saying I had reached out to a venue that we used to do events with pretty much monthly and was like, hey, we're doing in person again. We're so excited. And they were like, oh, yeah, we have all kinds of art events already booked. Oh. <laughs> and so it was just kind of funny because I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. You didn't wait for us for two years. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> I know. It's like finding your like right now. boyfriend got married. Because <laughs> I know like right now school just started here 
So I know that it's going to be like crazy for the next like three weeks mm -hmm. until everyone kind of gets adjusted to, you know, getting their kids and stuff back together. So it's like, okay. Like kind of tear tired, like, okay, well, when's a good time to be like, get back out there. Are you talking about when to get back out there? Like what date to schedule it or when to approach people? Like when, uh, kind of both, I guess. <laughs> like, but I think basically more of like when, when to approach people. Now, do it now. There's nothing stopping you. At 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. on a weekday. Yeah, a lot of the okay. um, restaurants or breweries are not super busy yet. They're going to be starting to pick up. Um, I know like for the lunches right after the kids all go back to school, it was a little bit hectic. Everybody who dropped off their kids and went out to eat, but they're not, you will find that they have a lot of free time between lunch and dinner and it, they'll be happy to be booking stuff for upcoming months because they won't really be too busy until December ish. So it's a good time to reach out. Also, if they don't, respond, like, like just harass them again, it's not personal. Like I always feel really, um, I'm, I'm very sensitive and I'm all, I'm terrified of rejection. And if you can just kind of be like, okay. <laughs> it's hard, but the truth is how many emails have I ghosted? Not because I didn't want to respond or didn't want to do something, but I just forgot. Like, so if we can right. kind of put yourself in that position, it's really helpful, at least for me. It is important to remember, as Michelle points out that like, it's, this is literally their job. Even if they say no, they are used to receiving all kinds of proposals for working together or business requests. And so they're, even if they don't have room or they don't feel like it's the right fit for their business, they won't think you are weird for asking. Like they are totally used to these kinds of inquiries. Um, and so that was uh, one that really helped me kind of realize like they, they, this is totally normal to them. It's not normal to you when you first start, or maybe for you, it's, it feels weird because you're switching up like what you're asking to do. Yeah. They, they are so like anyone I've talked to, they're just so used to these kinds of conversations all the time that they're not going to even, it's not weird. Yeah. And they're, they're busy. So if they, even if they see it and they're like, Ooh, that's awesome. They'll, somebody will be like, help, we need something. And then they're just, they might forget. So if you email them again and be like, Hey, I just wanted to follow up check back with you or like Michelle stop by even if they don't respond that it's a good time to stop by you can stop by and then if they're not there somebody will relay the message and that'll just remind them I mean the worst thing like I went to this like it's a, a tea room and like they have a like salt um kind of room and different kind of and so I was like oh this will be really cool to like do the bath bombs and with them and like when I was talking to the lady she kind of like she didn't know what to like expect because it's like craft parties and stuff here is not the norm and so she's like um like she just didn't know how to approach the whole situation so I like trying to explain I'm like but this is not something that I've done before so then it made it kind of even more awkward so I was like, okay, got a different approach on this because this one didn't work out. Emails or, with pictures are really useful. Um, but they, I went in person, so it was like. <laughs> are paint parties normal where you are? Yes. So I, I would just approach it like, it's like a paint party, but everybody's doing those. So this is something fun and different. And that might yeah. be a, a way to. Me, I'm like, I have three heads. <laughs> <laughs> it probably Love wasn't you it really probably wasn't <laughs> I didn't want to come to work today I don't know where I am I'm not even sure what you're saying because I am thinking about my three kids who are I'm mad at my kitchen manager right now <laughs> yeah. yeah probably has a crazy boss <laughs> Kathy or Susan, I'd love to hear about your first experience approaching if you want to share. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. 
but I know that Susan, you had that really cute gingerbread man situation when you were getting ready for the gingerbread house. You have an excellent, excellent memory. I do. Because it was pre-COVID. Yes. Um, I took the gingerbread recipe and made little men and asked if I could come make, I, I'm not remembering it exactly, but I, the note was to the manager and it said, can I come to your place to make my house? Something along that line. And uh, it opened you. the door at one venue. Um, and three other venues I found out were all related, all same corporation, even though I thought there were three different restaurants that I was hitting. So, um, and that was pre-COVID, and um, I found out that I absolutely loved teaching the gingerbread houses. Oh, I, I was very excited to do those. <laughs> I didn't get to do those yet, so this year. Um, Three years, a new year. Yep. Yeah. Um, my first one, it was uh, a very serendipitous thing. I had a coworker who is a regular at... Um, a local brewery that's about 20 minutes away and she was great friends with the people there and she's like oh I already told them about you just go in and show them what you're, you you want to do <laughs> and it was easy and simple so I was very lucky but if you know anybody that frequents a brewery that that helps or frequents um, a restaurant we've got a local restaurant here that there are people that are definite regulars at if you can, if you're friends with any of them, <laughs> get an introduction and then it doesn't feel just like, oh, I'm intruding on your space. The first time we asked a public venue, um, we were just having lunch at a brewery and the waiter came over and we were just like, have you guys ever taught had like these craft parties or paint parties here and they were just like oh we'd love to do that and we were like we're gonna do a planting event and they were just like awesome so and then from there we decided to start asking other breweries and that's when we had to get out of our comfort zone and walk in there and and we used to take the a flyer but sometimes it's nice to start with an email or or start with the flyer and then follow up with the email so either way you can start with either thing my favorite way is definitely just to stop by with a little gift. And if I was doing terrariums, I would probably do a little potted succulent. I might steal Susan's idea and be like, help, I need a home. And just do like a handwritten yeah. card. Yeah. Help, I need a home. And then be like, can we come and make terrariums here on, you know, sometime in at the end of September or whatever, if you want to give yourself a little le leeway because it's a newer type of party for you. Um, and that catches their attention. It's not that they're being bribed necessarily. It's that they won't forget about you as easily when they're so busy, if they have a little item that you brought them. So that's my yeah. favorite to do that. I have to say the very first time Michelle asked a venue, I'm going to, I'm going to tell them this story. I don't know if you remember it, Michelle, we were driving around together and I was going into places with bath bombs and a note. And I was like, Michelle, you're going to do it. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing this. <laughs> it was just her hurdle. You know, we all have hurdles when we're starting a business. And I was like, okay, just start by getting out of the car. And then I locked the door on her. And, <laughs> she <had to> go. <laughs> and as soon as she did it, you just walk in and you just hand, you don't ask for the person that's going to make the decision. The first time you walk in, you find the least busy person, walk up to them and be like, can I leave this for either the manager or if you called already and got their name, can I leave this for Brian? Thanks, bye. That's all you have to do. And so it feels scary, but you're literally just delivering something like, hey, can I leave this for this guy? Bye. It's, sometimes it's so rewarding because mm -hmm. I remember there was a, a winery that was so, we like really wanted to do events there, but I was nervous just because it's such a nice place. And went in and dropped off our materials, just like Lisa just explained. And then we got in the car and the phone rang and they were like, oh my gosh, you guys, you just came by and I was just so excited and we want to do this. So sometimes it's immediately rewarding because they're really excited about it. And, um, and sometimes it takes them a few weeks to get back to you and they're still excited. So how is it with like, 
um, when you're setting up for the transition parties, like with the materials and stuff, like worrying about the dirt and all that fun stuff? They're not too like, messy, but we do always um, put tablecloths down. We usually always bring um, like wipes and stuff like that, little things that we can help, like a little hand broom. But um, they don't really get too messy because the pot, the plants will already be potted in the pot. Um, it's less soil everywhere. Usually the only thing would be like the little rocks and some of the moss can be, the moss can kind of make a little bit of a mess when you're pulling it apart or cutting it and different things. Um, but we always clean up after our parties and we've never had venues complain about the mess, we'll usually kind of, you know, pull all our tables together, put all our tablecloths down, set up an area where everyone can kind of see us for our teaching table. Um, and depending on your table sizes, we will usually kind of bring out the materials as we're going through it. So we'll say, okay, we're gonna do our first layer of sand. I'm gonna bring around the sand and everyone's gonna need this many scoops. Um, then we'll pass, we'll take out a tub of sand to all the tables or every four people or however you've kind of planned it. And then after that step, we'll collect the sand, bring out or bring out the second layer and then collect the sand. We'll usually bring them the second one and then we'll go on to the next step. So that way it kind of keeps moving. There's less room for spills and things like that. But is like that I had my, my, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I am actually one of my friends, she's like kind of doing my, my Facebook page. And so I was telling her about the transfer. So she was like, where, where do you get this from? So I was telling her about the group. And so she's like, do you have any pictures? And so I'm like, um, technically I don't have any pictures. I said, but the group has pictures. And so she's like, well, can you use those pictures? I was like, I think I can. So she, I um, took some pictures and she posted them on my page as if I had the party. And I'm like, um, I feel so bad about doing this. She's like, don't worry about it. It's good for business. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't have this party. It's okay. It's <laughs> nice for people to see a visual of like what it looks like when people are there doing the party to like see right and I was just like you know how you like have the two and I'm like oh, this feels so bad like I didn't do this party. that's all right so you make it sometimes dude like <laughs> you can always but I just had to crack up because it was like actually people liked it and I'm like I'm like please don't act like where was this party and she just threw a boca and I'm like are you serious I didn't like I'm like if people like looked at my story this weekend they're gonna know I was not in boca this weekend <laughs> one thing we've really learned is that people are not paying as much attention as we at least for us that as we think they are they see a visual they like it they're like yeah as long as you deliver the experience you're showing like sometimes you've got, especially when you're first starting out, you just kind of got to make it happen. Because well, the thing is like when people, like when I do my actual like paint parties or canvas parties, like it's on my story, it's on my Facebook. And I'm like, these people don't know that I'm lying because I didn't post anywhere else, but on the business page, like, um, it was like, you're making me look bad. <laughs> no one's questioning you. They're so busy. They're you they're not they're just wondering if everybody else thinks that they're lying about their stories <laughs> <laughs> being being a super honest person because that's what my father completely instilled in me um i i know what you're i kind of think i understand what you're saying though you don't want to be putting yourself out there as untruthful <laughs> um it, if it doesn't feel right to you, don't do it. <laughs> but again, those pictures are to use. And you could always say, you could be having as much fun as these people are and just leave it at that. Not that you did that party, but. Great. And she's like, no, don't worry about it. It's good for business. She's like, people do it all the time. <laughs> well, good for business and what's good for you. It's your business. Right. 
<laughs> you don't feel right about it. You know, you, you do what makes your, your soul feel right. <laughs> So that's just, I had to crack up about it. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring the whole room down, but. <laughs> oh, you didn't. I was just getting distracted by the fact that reactions on Zoom are not the same as reactions on Teams on Microsoft. And it's funny, <laughs> we were just talking about like, our mental health the other day and doing what's best for our mental health and like taking care of ourselves. So, yeah. It's so funny like to see everyone um, on my, okay, like putting faces to faces now because I think the first um, Zoom I came on, I'm like, whoever does the TikToks, like I sit and watch all the TikToks. He was like, she does an amazing job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was like, you actually, the reason that I signed, I signed up because I like literally went through all of the pics. I'm like, if they have that where you can see who's watching the page, I'm like, I look like a complete stalker. Like I just sat there and watched all of them. <laughs> I often feel like I'm talking to a wall. And I, I just have to say, I, I've been, an hour ago, I posted a TikTok that I think is the coolest TikTok I've ever posted, and it has zero views, and it's a, with the the poison apple bath bomb, and it has cell block tango from um from Chicago, the song that goes he had it coming, he had it coming. I don't know if you know that song. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's it is the most perfect thing, and it has zero views, and my heart. I'm trying not to take it personally. You keep thinking that it's because of people's likes or dislikes instead of TikTok messing with you to try and get you. TikTok to has hurt my you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll like, get on there and push that out for you here after we're yes. done. I'm so <laughs> proud of it. Like, this is the most clever thing I've ever come up with. And yeah, screw TikTok. So yeah, no, I have no idea. A lot of times I feel like I'm just talking and talk it's it's a lot like talking to my children where it's just like you're talking and you're hoping they're listening it's like snoopy <laughs> it's a good thing i really have a great time making tiktoks <laughs> uh, yeah i was like i love your tiktoks i like oh thank you <laughs> it means everything to me <laughs> so it's like now I'm, I'm, I'm like I think I've watched you like okay now you see that she can do this she can do this you absolutely can <laughs> like I've made videos and they will sit like there and people are like how did you post a video on your Facebook but then when you look at your TikTok like there's no videos I'm like they're there you just can't see them I have that like a lot of them. <laughs> I need Just to don't follow use them. you back. We, I I will make sure that I follow follow you back. If you would just like say, "Hey, it's me, Veronica." That way, I can okay. make sure <laughs> the soccer. <laughs> that I can be your soccer too. <laughs> Definitely, I will definitely follow. I'm really interested to see the bath bomb one because I didn't see it today. <laughs> it's it's the most clever thing that I've done all day, and I I did a lot of recording of TikToks today, and I I thought that I was just funnier than all get out, but it's apparently... funny. I just I just watched it funny. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it was cute and funny, and it it was all Jessica's work because like she designed all of the I I love the poison bath bombs like they're they're gorgeous. And they are so much fun to kind of make videos around because the color palette is just really beautiful. So I made a whole bunch right, of- I, oops, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, they're just, it's fun. Because when I, when I first saw the bath bombs, I was like, oh, this reminds me of Snow White. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, that would be another cre uh, creative way to like advertise. Absolutely. <laughs> I really wanted it to be like that. <laughs> I went through several phases and this was the best. 
<laughs> I had a long conversation, not with Lisa and Jessica, but with some other friends about how I needed to let the idea go of making a bunch of corsets and doing like a Snow White photo shoot. <laughs> wow. wow. That was probably not the best use of my time, but the creativity so was <laughs> so it's like, I, I need to go and do medieval, like all the things with the poison. The, I love them. Yes. I, I love it. <laughs> I can see your vision. It's <laughs> with the people on TikTok that have the really great photo things where it's just like, oh, like, <laughs> I definitely could see that. I don't even know how to do that, but I would like to. I'm sure there's some there's some kind of animation out there that all you had to do is pop the pictures in there. <laughs> I would appreciate it. <laughs> well, I would love to stay here all night. It's a little after 9:30 and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've been up since 4:30. <laughs> oh, so, I'm going to say good night to all. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night.